A asthma is your denial of your own grief, if it's in a child. Well, it depends on what, you know, there's literally hundreds of things that you could be crying about. I'm speaking of you specifically. Yeah. And if you deny that grief, your children will experience that denial of that denial process of the grief, which is the asthma. They are not allowed when you deny your own grief, you're denying them being able to experience their own sadness. And when they do that, they just get into an asthmatic state almost straight away. When they're adults, yep. does it become their emotion then? Yeah. Or does it become it becomes the parents plus theirs? Is that Yeah, that's right. right. Every every denial that they've had of their own grief now through their life, which is the subsequent result of the parents denying their own grief, but then that caused them to be in a state where they had to shut down their own grief throughout their life. So now the asthma is a result of their own grief being shut down as well. Right. right within their life, yeah. And it literally, it's the parent's emotion until they are 20 or something like that. Until they're forever. Mm. It's always. But like, no matter how old your child is, yeah. if you've shut down your own emotion when they were little, yeah. how much of their emotion is really yours? All of it. A lot of it, eh? Um, not the stuff they chose to do, but the stuff you chose mm -hmm. to do when they were little, mm -hmm. that stays with them for good until they release it now. Mm -hmm. And so if you'll find if you're a parent, mm -hmm. if you release that emotion, even if you're even if you're eighty and your son's sixty, right, he will have an emotional experience as a result. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Because but we can release it, the effects on us, so I don't have to be burdened by my dad never releasing his emotion. No. You can release it for yourself, but I'm saying there's a really positive effect when the parent chooses to release their emotion mm -hmm. on the so, child. So if we release our emotions now for my father that's passed, will that affect him in a positive way? No, that question's already been asked, and it doesn't affect the person as positively, except because you've forgiven them. The process of forgiveness, which is actually releasing the emotion that causes the link, um, has a positive effect on them if they choose to allow it to have that positive effect. But it's very much dependent upon their choice. Yes, totally. Um, do learning difficulties with children affect all of this? Yes. Every I keep saying this. I mean, I'll say it again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Every single thing. <laughs> every single thing. <laughs> Did you not get every yeah. single thing? <laughs> yeah. Every single thing. Now, like there's a, there was a couple I visited in Tasmania recently who had an autistic child. That is the creation of the different emotions. And the beauty of the autistic child was that she was, she was exposing minute by minute by minute what the parents were denying. Every minute. So the entire time I was there, it was basically a discussion about, see what she just did then? What are you denying? See what she just did there? What are you denying? See what, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it was related to the interaction between what was going on to which parent at the time as well. So when she was reacting to her mother a certain way, then the mother was denying a certain emotion at that moment. And when she was reacting to her father a certain way, her father at that moment was denying the emotion. So have they been able to deal with the situation? Well, how many emotions does a person deny? Yeah, so obviously you're not going to heal that kind of a situation straight away. But there is a positive thing that occurs. And that, with regard to this child, what happened was, as soon as the parent owned their emotion, in other words, as soon as they got out of denial, and they only even had to do it intellectually, <clears throat> she automatically stopped reflecting it. So automatically her behaviour just changed like that. So, so we were having a discussion. During the discussion... I could feel the parents' emotions coming up. I'd ident she would start reflecting their emotion. I'd reflect it back at them that it was them. What was the emotion? As soon as they connected, she would quiet down again. And then she'd flare up again because in the discussion another emotion was coming up for the parent. And she'd get all rowdy again. So I'd reflect it back at the parent. She would quiet down again. And then we had a period where about half an hour the parents were both owning their emotions completely. So they were crying when they needed to cry. They were you know, just feeling what they were feeling. That entire time, she was quiet, quiet, just happy to do her own thing. And do different children, like I'm just thinking of family I know where the eldest child has quite a lot of behavioural problems, but the younger 
children seem? Yeah. Like they get progressively easier, kind of? Certainly, because that, usually with the first child, most parents have a lot yeah. more emotions about how to deal with them, not knowing what to do. So that's just absorbing all that stuff from their parents at that time? Exactly. And not knowing what to do with it themselves? Well, no, it's still the parents denying those emotions. Yeah, and uh, like uh, there was another lady, I think I've told this story before though, um, of uh, in, the, in England who she denied an emotion related to her father, she was telling me a story, <coughs> denied an emotion related to her father, the instant she did that her eight year old daughter just burst out sobbing at the, at the breakfast table and stayed sobbing until the lady owned her emotion. As soon as she owned her emotion, she started crying and the instant she started crying, her daughter stopped crying and went back and ate like nothing had happened actually. <laughs>